Why, hi there, I'm Ron Juckett, and welcome to a kind of an interesting presentation here at Retrosports.org. Today we're going to talk about a game that no longer exists, but really deserves a good hard look. If you remember from watching a couple other of my videos or some of the other stuff I've talked about over the last couple of weeks, I was looking for a card and dice game to do a long-term project that I could A, roll my own dice, B, really didn't need a uh, well, cart baseball game, but pretty much to roll my own dice so I could record my own results. That was relatively cheap or not overly expensive per season, not like 60 bucks and get the thrill of doing my own card and dice replay. Well, I tried Digital Diamond Baseball. I wasn't really very happy with the game engine. Uh, glad that version 8's coming out, I think, sometime this week and whatever, but it just, the engine just wasn't very, the app distribution was just too wonky, and you would tinker with it instead of it being right out of the gate. Uh, someone else, uh, Clinton Parks actually suggested NP3, and I have that, but I need to transfer it to another computer, from my old computer to a new computer. And anyway, um, the end, the national pastime engine is good, but sometimes I get kind of hung up on it. Same thing with the national pastime next generation. So I remember a game I found on, that I played before, called Ballhalla. Now, Ballhalla was created by a uh, Greg Sovon, who went on to create a bunch of other baseball games. I think Bahala was the first generation of his game creation. He created a play ball, um, some game that involved crazy eights that had eight sided die, and he's the current his current creation is Fall Classic Baseball, which you can find on sale from ASG Games. Um, they're all very much or similar. In, in design, I guess to a degree, uh, Fall Classic plays well. I have the 78 season. You'd pay $5 extra for the Excel Helper, which is, that's another story. And that's really not what I wanted to get into. But, you know, it's a good design if you're looking at baseball from another perspective. And that not being, you know, from the national pastime perspective or the stratomatic per perspective. I mean, we're blessed in this day and age to have all sorts of game engines that give you pretty much the desired uh, experience that you want. You can do something on the simple side with a well, basic app, for instance, uh, to get as complex as you want with a super advanced stratomatic or replay. I don't think the app of Master Game is as difficult to figure out is figuring out super advanced strat on your own. So depending on what type of experience to, if, if you want, if you want real players, if you want fiction, you can find whatever you want. I was looking for something that was going to give me a good experience on a single team project that I could actually do for a number of seasons. And I went back to Valhalla and tried it and liked it. Now, Valhalla is a difficult game. This is, I would say, it's right up there with replay, a card and nice version of replay and super advanced stratomatic on the difficulty meter. You're going to see why in a minute. The other thing, as I get to the screen, is that the game hasn't been produced since 2010. He would ship, he, it's all on PDFs or on a spreadsheet which we'll get into in a minute. But he came up with, as you can see, the two dice version, which is what I play. I play the E version of the two dice version. He says it has the steepest learning curve, but yes, it is pretty steep. We'll get into that. Uh, the three dice version, which is quote unquote his over easy version, he uses three 10 sided die, and apparently you could use a base situation chart, but what it's used for to advance the runners. And the four dice version, which I looked at momentarily before I looked into, is exactly like the two dice, except for there's two more dice to roll. So there's a little, they're, you're using four D6, and I believe you check against charts and cards, um, uh, charts and other things. Uh, we'll get into the two dice E version in a second. And let me show you what a card looks like. 
here are the 27 Yankees. And if you downloaded the thing, this would be what you would print out. This is your defensive chart. We'll get into what this all means in a minute. Lots and lots and lots of numbers. Lots and lots and lots of variety. And you can... Now let's take a look at an individual card. First thing you would notice is, oh, this goes on, this is kind of an APA, National Pastime Clone. You roll from 11, you roll the two-sided die from 1-1 one, one to 6-6, six, six. you look at the result, you record the play, you move on. Babe Ruth, as you can see in the middle here, my God, that's a pretty card. But you can also see a lot of stratomatic influence here. Uh, there are split results on dice rolls. If you look at Babe Ruth, if you roll a 1-3 he and a 10-sided die, so basically you really need 2-D6 and 1-D10 to play. If you roll a 1-3 for Babe Ruth, chances are you got a 50-50 shot at a homer. But if the D10 result is 6 or higher, you get a triple. Okay, lots of things. Basically from 1-1 one, one to 3-2 measures, a batter is just pure offense. And so look at Ruth. He's got two straight homers and a half. Out of 30, two and a half chance out of 36 of getting a straight homer. That's unbelievable. And then you can see where it goes to walks and strikeouts. And there's only one result on that 32 where he can actually get an out. That's absolutely astounding. And then you can see where the pitcher kinds, pitchers kind of interfere. Not interfere, but interact. On a roll of 3-3 three, three or to 3-6, pitchers have a rating, a hit rating. And if you add, you can see, let's say he rolled a 3-5, you add it, the pitcher's rating to a 5. If it's over 7, it's a single to center. That's what the SE means. If it's less than 7, it's a ground out to second. Genius. There's pitcher catch there's pitcher batter interaction there. In fact, there's a lot of pitcher interaction there. If you look at the rolls between 5-1 and 5-4, that goes against the pitcher's walk rating. Usually a 5-4 is going to be always a walk, because pitchers again are graded. Add the pitcher's rating to that. If it's less than seven, it's the result on the right. On Babe Ruth, it's a fly out to right on a 51, a ground out to short on a 52. Ground out to the pitcher on a 53 and a fly out to left on a 54, or it's a walk. There's also some a little bit of home field advantage cooked into all the cards. A 5-5 roll at home for Babe Ruth and for any of these players is a single to center. If you're away, if the Yankees were away, it's a line out. In Babe Ruth, in Earl Combs' case, it's a line out to third. Ray Moorhart, a line out to fifth. And then you get some strikeout things from 5-6 to 6-5. Depending on what the pitcher's K rating is, you add it. If it's above 7, it's a strikeout. If not, it's an out. Confused? Yeah, it takes a little bit to get used to. But it's an ingenious system. How are players rated? Well, you can see here. Babe Ruth is rated as a left fielder and a right fielder. No just simple you know, outfield ratings as an APA basic. And then it goes tells you on Babe's card how many games he played in the two different positions. Now, run there actually is a good thing. S is slow, then there's average and fast. In this case, you want slow. That means that he's a better chance of throwing runners out. But unlike most games, which will do maybe a range and an arm rating, you can look at Babe, uh, that all the outfielders here are rated for Hits allowed, hitting an error, a throwing error, and I don't know what a DF is. Is DF on the? I'll we'll look at that when we go to the computer version in a second. So all fielder, all outfielders are rated on four different things. The lower the number, the better chance of him making that play. We'll get to how it all kind of intermeshes. It's quite the matrix. It is a difficult game. Let's take a look at some infielders, shall we? Uh, Lou Gehrig, again, that's a hell of a card. Defense, 
He's an A for speed at first, and then the infielders are rated on a, against hits, against fielding ratings, a, a fielding errors, and throwing errors. And then in, in Garrick's case, he's a first baseman, how well he saves against throws in the dirt. That all matters in the game. Does it look complex? Do I expect you to understand it? No. No. And like I said, it's a mesh of things. And it goes... Oops, I'm going to... I'm just going to... When you put a PDF into Microsoft Edge and you, spin, and you hit F9, which is what I use to turn scenes here, it spins the PDF around. So yes, on the surface, this looks amazingly complex. And when you look at the description, when it says, oh, after several hours, you'll figure this out. Well, it doesn't really take several hours. There's a sample game there that you can look at. And pitch setting up is kind of, like I said, this is a complex game. And let, let me now show you. What it looks like on as soon as I hit cancel here. What it looks like on the computer. This is not the 27 Yankees. This is the 46 uh, Washington Senators against the 46 Boston Red Sox. And so you can see how information is presented there. And normally I'm not a fan of fast action cards, but it's absolutely required. In this game, but with a simple dice roll, we'll just take a look at this Leon Culberson batting Roger Wolf on the mound. The dice roll is a 6 4. Well, Culberson, if you look at 6 4, Culberson would be pitcher K plus 4 or ground out to third. And so Wolf's strikeout rating is a 2. 2 plus 4 is 6, it's less than 7. And so instead, it's a ground out to third. Now let's say there was a runner on first. I can look to see on the charts here on the right what would be a ground out to th if I had a runner on first, would my runner make it to second base? Well, you can see in this particular case, it's an RF. So with the number six hitter being up, if Bobby Dorr was on first, he would take second. That Let's say instead it was Rudy York, who's an A. Nope, he's going to hold. As, then I would look at what my batter speed is. Culberson is an A. So instead of that runner going to second, Culberson, instead, if he didn't strike out, went into a double, grinded into a double play. Yes, it's complicated. I don't expect you to, to understand it. But what Greg did, as I put this screen back up, what Greg did, at least with this first version of his game, was took everything he liked from APA, which is very simple, 1-1 one, one to 6-6. Six, six. He sprinkled some things in from Strat. Let's take a look at how the defense works. Should have done that before I changed screens, Ron. If you look at those dice rolls between 41 and 46, those are all potential deep defense checks. And he's Canadian, so forgive him for spelling defense with a C instead of an S. He's given a way for a good pitcher to get out of a defensive, what he calls a lapse. So in this case, well, let me see if I can find. Let's pretend for a second you roll a 42, okay? The first thing you would check would be the secondary dice roll. If it's a 14, 11 through 14, Wolf gets a strikeout. You ignore it. Then you look at the pass ball rating. If the second dice rating is between 1, 5, and 4, 2, because that's Al Evans' pass ball rating is a 4, 3. So anything with a 4, 3 or higher would be a pass ball. Then you would look at the defensive chart. And here... You would, there's no C. Why would, oh, let's say 42 or 40, yeah, 42. Apparently the catcher can call the wrong pitch. So let's say the catcher calls the wrong pitch. You look at the, why you would look at the catcher's hit rating there. I'm not sure, but it's a six. So you want any number higher than a six for the out. It's a nine. It's an out. So it's down a home run to right field. That's okay. 
Let's take look at that being a 43 roll. Same things. Not a strikeout. He doesn't have a number for the wild pitch, so you'd ignore that. That's potentially a two-base throwing error for the shortstop. Cecil Travis has a rating of three at throwing error. That die is a nine. It's not a throwing error. Throw to first for the out. It's very complex. But it's all uh, the computer version is all laid out for me to play. So I can. Get a game in in about 30 to 40 minutes, which is actually not, which is pretty fast. We'll go through a sample inning in a minute. Um, it's pretty fast. I understand where to look on sheets, and it plays well. The stats are, and the stats are okay. You're not going to get the fielding altogether right, but everyone has a chance to make a play. And if you look at where the pitcher interaction is, The pitcher interacts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 out of 36 places on the card. Pitcher can change a strike, a walk, or a hit, or 16, a home run. It's about what you would find on a Stratic card. As I said, he's kind of smushed in this version of his game, Appa and Strat together, and come up with if they had a child. You look at the defensive ratings. One, two, three, four. Four defensive checks on every card. That's about one out of nine. Just about if you look at a strat card on the four, five, and six columns with the pitcher. Oops, I went to do that. Uh, let's change that one again. Go to the, that four column in the, on the card, and if you take a look at the four defensive chances, then that roughly equates to about what the X cards are in a pitcher, X chances are in a Stratomatic pitcher's card. So everyone gets involved. And there's if you do the, the cards and dice, pure cards and dice version of the game where you're cutting out everything, it comes with 40 fast action cards. So there's 40 different base scenarios and 40 different fielding things. It, that part is very much like Status Pro. So he took all of his favorite parts of his games from Status Pro, Appa, and Stratomatic and threw them together. You, st you call your own steals. You call your own bunts. There's no automatic thing there. There are unusual plays. Share the right thing. If you're into that sort of thing, I'm not. I don't like it. I don't want to say I don't like it. I find them in a card and dice game very cumbersome, especially when you've taken 10 minutes to set up a game, you get the unusual play, which is a 4-6 and then a 6-6. Six, six. It'll tell you in the computer game. And then you get you roll the, the D10 and you get a 2 game called because of rain. No, I didn't sit through all this to put it together to get a game called the rain or um, anything like that. You can get ejections, but it's just not something I necessarily enjoy all that much. But they're there. There's unusual play charts too. Let's take a look at that. Depending on what they are. So let's say if you have the bases loaded, you get it, you roll a four. Line drive off the pitcher's shin straight to the first baseman who steps on the bag for the out, then tags out the runner on first who was just standing there. He fires home for a triple play. Okay. So it's hard to make people happy. It, it really is hard to make people happy in, in the sense of this game. Not in the sense of this game, but in the sense of trying what's rare players and what's not. Since I do as played replays, uh, it just doesn't really interest me. I just want to play the game. There's enough there to keep you busy. And he's done a wonderful job trying to integrate things such as um, 
you know, he, uh, regular errors, throwing errors, wild pitches, balks, hit by batters, uh, multiple checks per card, I suppose. Um, it's a very, very deep game. You can decide to send runners. There's a d lots of different charts. Like I said, on the complexity thing, I think this is right up there with replay and, and super advanced strat. All right, let's do a sample inning. Let's start with Don DiMaggio at the plate against Roger Wolf. You see the dice roll of a 44. So against a left-handed pitcher, DiMaggio uh, with a five roll right here could either have a double or a homer. Well, Wolf's a righty. So I look here at the outs, and it's F8. Fly out to center, one out. Next batter, Eddie Pellegrini. And Eddie rolls a 3-6. Now, Roger has a hit rating of 1. I know from that it's going to be a hit rate check. But since it's a 36, you don't have a hit rate. 1 plus 6 is 7. And so instead of it being a fly out to left, I have a single to left. So there's one on for Ted Williams. Let's see what Teddy Ballgame does. Ted rolls a 5-6. That's a strikeout check. Pitcher K plus 6 is so if it's less than seven, which is kind of difficult since it's a six to start with, and Wolf's a two, it's a strikeout and not a fly out to right. So there's two out for Bobby Door with a runner on first. Okay. Next time is a five two. That's a walk check. Okay. Pitcher's walk rating is a three. Yeah, to the two, it's a five, less than seven. And so instead of a walk, it's a ground out to second, and that's the inning. Pretty snazzy, huh? Let's have a sample inning for the Nats here. Here's my crappy reliever, Mel Deutsch. We start with Sherry Robinson and get another 3-6. His hit rating is a 3. You add it to the 6 for a 9. It's a single to right. Not what the Red Sox want. Buddy Lewis rolls a 3-1, okay? It just says 9 there. So if there's no one on, I would just record the 9 and go on. It's a fly out to right. But I look at my flip card thing, the runner advancement charts. F9, you see where the little plus sign is there, and N. Nope, he can't advance. So one out, runner on first. For Jeff Heath, who rolls a 3-3, okay. Deutsch's hit rating is a 3. I add it to the 3. It's a 6, not 7. So I ignore the double. Yep, a pitcher can give up a double that way. It's a fly out to center. I check my chart. Runner on first doesn't go. There's two out. Record your result. I really would love a, f a fielding rating here. Two out for Jack Sanford. A 1-5. Okay. You can read this a couple different ways. This one has a stratomatic influence. It's a split. It's actually a three-way split. You can have a regular single on this roll, an infield single, and you see the six right here, and you don't see anything after it. You look at the next dice result number, and it means a walk. So a seven, eight, or a nine for Sanford would be a walk. Well, you can read it a couple days, ways. This as a D10 is a 9, so I could read it as a walk. So runners on first and second. Or, if I forget that's there, there's the R10 right up here, which is a 3, which would be an infield single. And you can't, runners would only advance one base. We'll just consider it's first and second. A okay, next batter. Cecil Travis rolls a 6-1. That's a strikeout check. Okay. Deutsch's strikeout rating is 2. 2-1 two and one is 3. Not a strikeout. The fly out to right. Since it's the third out, it doesn't matter. Inning is over. Now let's say... 
Oh, here's a good one. Let's say there's runners on first and second. I got a I got a 43 rule, which is a defensive rule. First thing I check is my SDR, which is a 1-6, okay? I then check the KD number. It's not under 1-3, so, so Mel is not going to get it out of it with a strikeout. He does have a rating on the 43 wild pitch. If it was more than a 4-2, that secondary dice number, then it would be a wild pitch. Since it's not, I then look at the defensive part of it. Shortstop, fielding error, two stars, which means that would be potentially a two base error. Now, you look up here, it rolls that die for you already. So I know when I look at Johnny Pesky here that my roll is a 5. You look above the plus, you see where the fielding error is, and it's a 4. Lower is better. So anything above a 4 would be a 2 base error. It is not. He snags the ball and makes the play. Now, I look here. Let's just say that I had just a runner on first. Let's just say Heath was on first and there was one out. Does Heath go to second? No. So I know I at least have a fielder's choice. It would go 6-4. Does Evans ground another double play? Well, in this case, yes, there's a Y there. 6-4-3. There you go. That's pretty much an inning in the basics. So you can you can cut off throws. You got lots of stuff for outfielders th for assists. It's a very very complete game. I've played eight games in the Red Sox season. I'm about to set it up to do some more. Like I said, in a in a close four three game, it's about thirty thirty five minutes. I would the the link to the spreadsheet is actually I'll put it in the description where you can find it. The spreadsheet is in, written in an older version of Excel, done in Visual Basic. So, a lot of the automated features to set up the game just aren't there. You have to hand copy teams from the team sheets into the five uh, pages of the game. No, nope, I'll do this first. No, nope, you are on yourself. Do that first. Okay. Like for the Red Sox, you have to put the a lot of it's putting it together manually. This is the Red Sox team sheet, and so you would click on the buttons to put players in certain in the positions. But if you change someone's position, it doesn't automatically go in the lineup. So let's say I take Bobby Dorr out and put Don Guttridge in at first, or second base. I hit the button, and Guttridge's ratings are there. I go back to the Washington batting order, and you can see Guttridge's ratings are now at second base. That part is easy. But I have to copy the information from another spreadsheet onto there to make it work. And then the five sheets for the, the four pages of card sheets. You can see what Rudy York can, well, Hal, Hal Wagner is the one that's highlighted. So you can see what you would roll for Hal Wagner. And his defensive ratings are there. It's not the most intuitive system in the world, but it's there. Ignore that. You could conceivably print your own score sheets. But there, he gives you a couple different ways to do that. You can print your own score sheets, insert the players' names, keep score, you know, print that one out and sc score it that way. That's pretty good. The rules are all set here if you want to go through and, and read them that way in the sheet, along with all the unusual plays and such. 
and of course there's an instruction thing for how to use the the helper but it's not Like I said there's a lot if unless you there's a lot of visual basic there and and to even get the sheets to work because I changed the name I tried to put it into the a socks away sheet in a socks home sheet but it broke the ways to get the starting lineups pre-produced and so I had to go through and change about 20 lines of code in there to make it so it would read the right sheet so it would it would work if you were interested in doing if you're interested in playing I would actually just get the instructions and, and grab one season and just print out some teams and learn it that way. Um, but it all makes sense, you know, and for this guy's first version of a game, it's tremendous. It is so deep. It's almost too deep, and I could see why he wanted to go on to create other things. But the game is absolutely free, and for a first published effort, it's fantastic and once you get the basics down i don't think it takes a few hours you you go if you just took an hour to read through the instructions and the sample game that you can download to go with it you should be able to pick it up a lot of its logic if you clip out the the cards the the fast action cards i did hold on a sec i think i can show you what one of those looks like Or not, because that would be too easy. Right here. Yeah, there. Here's what the uh, what the, uh, the the fast action cards are. It tells you the base situation. If you want to move a runner around, you just flip one of those and then refer to the right chart. Uh, tells you what the what happens if you if you get to the fielding part of your 41, 42, 43, and 46 check. Uh, if you need extra numbers, such as a 2D roll, a 3D roll, which I'm not sure what those numbers are. Anyway, there's just a lot of depth to the game. He did a very good job. It's kind of confusing for a lot of it. I can go this way out. Yeah. But like I said, for a first effort, it plays very well. It hasn't been updated, uh, like I said, in nine years. If you were, if I was to make some suggestions on how to improve it, I would reverse the fielding rating so everything kind of matched up, 10 being the best and 1 being the worst. So anything under... A dice roll as opposed to everything over a dice roll uh for those who like rare plays i think the rare plays are good for that even though i don't use them it's very very good for a single team replay it just kind of flows together rather quickly you get a good taste of it you make every decision there's no ai in that spreadsheet not at all it's a pure you're managing both teams and you're trying to manage both teams to the best of your ability and every season uh, until 2010 is available for free you can do it in the spreadsheet form if you want to actually take the big challenge into that or just print up the pdfs obviously older seasons are going to be cheaper to print uh, but you can just leave them on the sheet if you want the learning curve as he t tells you in the description is steep to begin with but you know, I think he tried to cram everything that he wanted to into one game and then created some other games after that that were simpler and did better. Uh, but this is a tremendous game on its own. You don't have a problem without distribution with it. You get the challenge of excitement of pretty much every play being different. Yes, he did make an effort to do some not a 50 50 as far as pitcher interactions concerned pitchers have grades for um let me go back to the spreadsheet real quick
pitchers that get a one to seven grade on hits, walks, strikeouts, home runs. So every pitcher is graded four different ways for that. Um, and then a good pitcher can bail his team out on a, on a strikeout roll, on a defensive play. There's two different wild pitch settings. There's a block setting. Everyone's rated for pickoffs, normal, very good, whatever. There's no built-in fatigue, but you get it, that BFP there. It tells you how many batters they should face. And again, you can put on whatever fatigue system that you want. You can be strict with it. You can be loose with it. Catchers are rated for fielding errors, throwing errors, stolen base errors, pass balls. Everyone has several thousand diff or several different defensive things. There's at least four different defensive ratings for the outfielders, three for the infielders except for first base, and then there's four for a first baseman. I mean, he really thought of everything. And you never know what you're going to run into. You can play the infield in. You can play the outfield in. You can. I don't know if you can bunt for a hit or not. Oh, yeah, you can't, no. But you can sack, you can hit and run. I haven't really done that yet. Um, the 45 roll there, if it's a wild pitch, it can technically be out of play. But I don't like wasted dice rolls in a card and dice game. So that's not poop. It's popped out, out of play. Um, I just look at the outs thing there. If I got a 45, no wild pitch, okay. Out of play, nope. It's a fly, in this case, it's a foul out to right. So it is not for the faint of heart. And as I said, the spreadsheet. Oh, God bless America. And the spreadsheet is not for the faint of heart. Uh, it takes me about 10, sec uh, 10 minutes to set up a new series because i got to copy everything from a master team worksheet to there. And then because then set up lineups and, and such. But... I, when I, I set up for a series, so I just let it go. You set for the series, you find the game on Baseball Reference, you make the appropriate changes, and it kind of goes from there. And if you really want to see a game, if a couple of you ask, I will actually tape one and, and walk you through it. But as you can tell, when you're trying to go through with different buttons for different programs, it's there. But Greg, I'm going to actually post this on a the tabletop sports form. Greg, if you're watching, this game holds up rather well, and you did a very good job. For a classic, which does a very good job of giving a pitcher a grade of how they are on a particular day, so a crappy pitcher can end up having, let's say, an A grade for the day and get a lot more outs, and someone like Roger Clemens or Pedro Martinez can get a C grade and just not have their stuff on any, any given day. That's fall classic baseball. This plays as complex as it is. Once you understand it, it plays fast. And when you understand that more than half of any game is going to be played with the bases empty, it flies by until you get a runner on, and then you can slow it down. You, you have to slow it down, and it makes you pay attention. And for me, I get to come up with the result. I don't roll the dice. The computer do all does that. And if you're wondering about what it keeps track of, there's no stat keeping function on the spreadsheet. So it, it really doesn't know what, what it's doing. And there's 9,000 different set of dice on there. Which is it going to follow? Um, it makes you, the game player, pay attention and record and go slower. So, Greg, you did a wonderful job with this. I would love to see the missing nine seasons done for it and put into the spreadsheet form, but I understand that this game is probably dead. And he's got other games, and if you're interested in finding one that's probably a little more mature, I highly recommend Fall Classic Baseball, which I will make sure I will go through next fall when we go back into Cards and Dice Sunday. It's, it's a very good game. I wish that the helper was as going to say easy to use as this but but anyway so that's what i found to use the game the name of the game is ballhalla it's a forgotten classic it's a gem it needs a little bit of polish but nothing too uh, ordinary i mean if i was to design something like this i would definitely go as he did with a 3d10 and go there with the take this setup with a 3d10 just for granularity but besides that it's a very playable game, and it just 
it gives everyone just that sense of individuality, especially pitchers and fielders, to make it not feel like everyone's a two or everyone's a one or there's, yeah. So that's that. I'm Ron Juckett for Retro Sports Network. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll talk to you the next time.